Hello, uh, in this video we'll explain uh, background information about VHDL and programming in VHDL. We'll start uh, by explaining how we can implement or describe the AND gate, the OR gate, and the inverter gate using VHDL. And we'll then explain how to do a, a Boolean expression. For the Boolean expression, uh, we'll explain it using two different methods or uh, modeling styles, the behavioral and the structural design. We're going to explain each and the differences between them. And finally, we'll introduce EDA Playground, which is a web-based simulator. We'll use it um, as a substitute to Quartus and uh, ModelSim. First of all, what is VHDL? VHDL is an acronym for another acronym that's very high speed integrated circuit hardware description language meaning it's a language that describes hardware or physical hardware. Unlike any other software programming language that you may know, uh, VHDL describes hardware instead of software, meaning you can type VH, uh, VHDL code and then um, compile it, test it, and then synthesize it into uh, a physical hardware device. VHDL uh, is case insensitive, meaning uppercase or lowercase letters do not matter, they are the same. Uh, all file names in VHDL must uh, start with a letter. An acceptable, an acceptable name would be, for example, lab1. There shouldn't be any space or special characters uh, in a file name or a variable name in VHDL, uh, unless it's the underscore. So if you want to separate two, sep uh, two words in VHDL, you can say and underscore gate, for example, or you can, um, you can change the case of the second word. Um, so it will be and uppercase G and then ATE. There are different ways to express uh, variables, but keep in mind that VHDL is case insensitive, insensitive so it doesn't matter, uh, the case doesn't matter. We mentioned earlier that there's, there are two modeling types in VHDL. I like to uh, use the uh, analogy of a wall. Uh, the wall could be concrete, as you can see on the right, a concrete wall, or a wall that's made using bricks. The bricks are small structures that you design first or build, and then combine many to create a structural model, which is uh, the wall. You can also create a wall using one uh, concrete, one large concrete piece, but the purpose of both is the same. They're both walls, except they're designed differently. Same with VHDL uh, code. Uh, you can, in some cases, you can write the same code using the two modeling types. The structural modeling type describes the circuit and the wiring between components. So it's more relevant to the circuit schematic you have a circuit schematic, and then you can describe it using stru a structural modeling. For that, you often will need uh, more than one file to implement the structural modeling. Um, and these files, once you define them, test them separately, you can combine them into one structural uh, model. So the structural model will use the other files as components or structures. Uh, in its description. The other type of modeling is called the behavioral modeling. From its name, it describes the behavior of the circuit. It's closer to English than the structural modeling, meaning uh, you can read the code and in some cases you can understand what it's actually doing. So we have a flow of data uh, or algorithm. You can uh, easily or you can more directly convert it into or translated into, into VHDL code. And it's oftentimes can be written using one single file. And it contains operators such as uh, the AND operator or the OR operator and statements like the for loop, while loop, uh, the if statement, the switch case, etc. So I, I highlighted here keywords that you may see in a structural uh, modeling code, which is the keyword component. So if you see a, the word component in your code, it means it's a structural model. Um, also, for the behavioral model, 
if you see, for example, the while statement or operators used like the AND gate, uh, the OR gate or the OR operator in the behavioral call, it means it's behavioral modeling. Now, in this slide here, you see uh, what a basic behavioral modeling code looks like. It is actually implementing the NOT gate. You have three parts uh, into the code. The first part is called the library declaration. In this part, you just call whatever library files are needed in your, um, in your code. There are only three, li uh, three lines of code declaring the library files that we're going to need. The top line of code is simply a comment. You can add comments in VHDL using two dashes. So it's dash dash and then my name, for example, as a comment or the author's name, followed by three lines uh, to declare the libraries we'll need. So this is the first part of the code. The second part of the code is the entity declaration, meaning we're going to assign a name for our device that we're going to implement or describe in the file and uh, also declare the ports that are needed. A port is any input or an output to the circuit. Here we're describing the NOT gate. The NOT gate can only take one input. So we'll say port A as the first input, the first and the last input. We don't have any more inputs for the NOT gate. And then here we have Y as the output of the NOT gate. In VHDL, once you declare the, the uh, port name, you need to follow it by the colon. And then you have to mention whether it's an input or an output. And then mention how many points, uh, how many uh, bits it consists of. Standard logic or std underscore logic indicates that the variable is only one bit long. So standard logic means one bit. Now we're done with listing all the inputs. So we'll get, we're going to use a semicolon here. Semicolon because we're, we're done with the inputs. And uh, what, what we're going to write after is totally different from what we started with. So the next thing we're going to say is that we have an output named y and colon, meaning it is or y is an output. So we said it's an out, meaning output. And how many bits it is? It's just one bit. So we said standard logic. Again, standard logic means one single bit. OK, so this is the second part of the code. The last part is called the architecture uh, part, in which we actually describe the uh, wiring between uh, the, the components or the inputs and the outputs, meaning the relationship between the inputs and the outputs, or we define the outputs of the circuit. If it's a behavioral modeling code, then it's more direct, it's more straightforward. You just write it for the not gate. You're going to write it as y is assigned a value equals to, so this is called the assignment operator. In VHDL, you have to use the less than and then equals to from the keyboard. And this is called the assignment operator. Think, think of it as an arrow pointing from not A into Y, because we are evaluating not A and then assigning it to Y. And then semicolon at the end as part of the syntax. It is important not to miss uh, any required semicolons or colons or commas even in some cases. So, um, for the NOT gate, or for the, the code that you see on the screen here, anything that's in black uh, that's a, that's in black is fixed code. You shouldn't change it. These are keywords that are part of the syntax. And anything in green is a comment. You just type two dashes followed by the comment that you want to mention. You can add more comments to help you understand the code. Anything that's in dark red or burgundy is editable. I can change it to whatever I want, but there are rules, of course. 
For example, uh, the name of the entity, I chose it to be not gate. But the name here is repeated three times in the code, if you notice. And it has to be descriptive. It doesn't make sense to describe an AND gate and the name is not gate. So make sure that the name of the entity is, is meaningful or, or it's reflective of what you're actually doing. Um, and here we want to describe the not gate, so we call the not operator. So these are optional, I can change them, but there are rules on what to change and, and when. Okay, a few notes on the code here. This name or the name of the entity is repeated three times. Once when you start declaring the ports, entity not gate, and then once when you want to end, end the entity. And once again, when you want to describe the architecture of that entity, the name must be unique, meaning if you have multiple files in your project, this name should not rep uh, be repeated. It should be unique to that file. Uh, and it must begin with a letter. You cannot use symbols uh, unless it's the underscore. Uh, and you can't use a space in the entity name. And make sure that the name is descriptive. Usually, the, the name here must match the name of the file itself. So you're going to save it as not gate.vhd. Semicolons, sometimes they're easy to neglect, so make sure you pay attention to that. Otherwise, the compiler will, um, or the simulation tool will give you an error. Here, there is a begin after the architecture, or after is, but for the entity, there is no begin. So small details that you, need, that you need to pay attention to. Now moving on to the two inputs or gate. What we, what we can do is use the not gate as a template and then simply modify it to work as the or gate. So the not gate, we didn't have B because the not gate only takes one input. Here we added it, we used, it, we used, a, semi, uh, we used a comma to separate A from B. And the reason why we only use the comma because they're similar, they're both inputs, they're both one, one bit long. So a comma was sufficient here. If they're totally different, which we're gonna explain uh, in future labs, then you have to use a semicolon to separate them. Just like here, what we did here, it's an output and we're separating from the inputs. We're separating it from the inputs, that's why we used a semicolon, okay? and we used a descriptive name, which is the OR gate. And here for the operator of the OR gate, we have to use the OR, uppercase or lowercase, doesn't matter. So this is the only difference. For the NOT gate, it was simply Y is assigned a value equals to NOT A. Here it's Y is assigned a value equals to A or B. You can modify this easily to make it work as an AND gate or as a FOR input OR gate or anything you want. Uh, related to the, the logic gates, or even a Boolean expression. You can do a Boolean expression here. Just make sure you name the entity something meaningful like expression or exp, add more inputs to the port list, and then write the expression here. We already introduced the not operator. There is the or operator, there is the and. You can also use a nand, nor x or x nor all of these are possible or acceptable uh, logic operators in VHDL. So here is an exercise where we have the template of the not gate or the not gate as a template and we want to modify it to make it work as uh, f is equal to not k and l or m. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the name of the entity to something meaningful or more descriptive. I'll name it exp, for example. So here I have to say end exp, and then here end exp, uh, sorry, architecture behave of exp. Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing I'm going to do is see how many inputs I have. I have k, l, and m. I don't have a anymore, so I'm going to cross it and say, k comma l comma m there again i'm using a comma because k l and m are all inputs and they're all one bit so they're kind of similar now 
for the output, I only have one output and it is F. So I'm going to erase Y or cross it and say F instead of it. So F is the output of my uh, expression and it is one bit only. We're almost done except for the last part here. Now I no longer have Y, it is F. And it's not not A, it's instead, let me cross everything here and then rewrite it from scratch. So F is less than equal. Again, you, you should read this as is assigned a value equal. So because this is the assignment operator, F is assigned a value equals to not K and then and L or um, and then a semicolon here to help me with the priority or to make this more readable what we can do is add parentheses here and another one here so f is equal to not k and l or m so this completes the code or the behavioral modeling of the expression f is equal to not k and l or m you can see it here uh, clearly. I use the name expression underscore behave to describe it. Now for structural modeling, which is the second uh, modeling type, we have to start with thinking about the expression uh, circuit schematic, what it looks like, or the logic diagram of the circuit. You can with practice, you can do this in your head, but for complex projects or if you're new to this, it's helpful if you have um, a, a small sketch of the circuit logic diagram or the, the logic diagram of the expression. So we're going to do the same expression now, but using structural modeling this, type, this time. So what we'll do is write uh, or sketch the expression. And after that, what we'll do is name all the gates, assign them unique names. I named uh, the first not gate, not gate one, because I might have other not gates in my expression. Here I only have one, so it will be just not gate one, and then and gate one or gate one. The output of the not gate is a wire or a signal. It's internal signal, meaning it's not an input or an output to the expression. So it doesn't have a name. So I labeled it wire one. Here I have another internal signal. I labeled it wire two. Any other signal is already labeled because it is an input or an output. K is an input, L is an input, M is an input. So all of these wires are labeled. F is an output and it has a name already. So I don't need to worry about naming it. Now, I already have the code here, but I'll explain it part by part. So for the structural modeling, since we said it depends on more than one file, or you have to implement it using more than one file usually, because it consists of smaller structures. For that, we're going to assume that the AND gate, the NOT gate, and the OR gate, which I'm using here as components, are already defined previously in my project folder. OK, so let's start explaining the code part by part. The first part is the library declaration. The second part is the entity declaration in which I describe the entity name, the ports, inputs, and outputs. The first and second parts of the code are exactly the same as the behavioral modeling code, except I changed the name of the entity because I want it to be unique and different. The third part, which is the architecture part, is what differs or dif differentiates the behavioral from the structural modeling. So after saying is and before begin, before begin and after is, we're going to list all the components that we will need or declare them. We have to use the keyword uh, component and component, component and component for each component that is used. So the not gate is one component. So we're listing it here as a component, component, not gate, and then port A, all of the ports of A as they are described in the previous file. So this is very crucial. 
here this should be taken from the uh, the original file of the AND gate so the AND gate the top one is the AND gate the second one is taken from the NOT gate the last one is taken from the OR gate these are predefined in my AND gate A, B and Y I use these particular variable names even though my expression doesn't use them I use KLM in my expression I still have to stick to the same names as the AND gate and the way it was defined in the original file. You shouldn't change it. If you change it, it won't work. Because here you're simply calling the component along with its uh, properties or port names, exact port names. You cannot change them. Okay, so what I would do is open the entity files, the structural modeling, uh, the behavioral modeling of the AND gate and copy this part of the code directly from the AND gate. For the NOT gate, I'll do the same and so on. And pay attention to the fact that the NOT gate here is only used once in my expression, but I could use it more than once. But if I do use it more than once, I do not need to repeat this line of code. I still need to put it just once, declare it once, and then use it as many as needed later on in my code in particular when i describe uh, the connection between the components in the in between begin and end so between these two parts so once you declare the components that are needed you will declare the signals that are internal since the ports are already described in the uh, port part the signals are any internal uh, internal wires so wire one wire 2 are considered signals because they're internal signals okay k l m and f are ports so they're already described here okay these are the signals wire 1 wire 2 are each one single bit so i said standard logic so don't forget to mention how many bits they are and in vhdl standard logic means one bit now we're done declaring everything that we need, the expression ports, the expression components that are used, and so on. What's left for us to do is to describe the connection between the components. So what we'll do is look at the schematic we prepared earlier, and then write the first name here. So I'll, I'll highlight them so it's clear. We'll start with uh, here the NOT gate let's use a clearer color okay. the NOT gate I have to call it by its name because I want to describe it so I'll say NOT gate now what is it what is this NOT gate because I could name it gate 1 or anything else this NOT gate is actually an inverter or a NOT gate which is the same name as I declared it here. Okay, so this blue is the same as the blue at the bottom. Now, port map is part of the syntax. I have to use it exactly as it is, port map, because I'm mapping the ports to my um, components. Port map, you'll have to say, uh, K, because I'm describing this not gate right here. So K, and the output is wire one, this wire one. Okay, now I'm done with the first gate, which is uh, not gate one. Now I'm gonna describe the AND gate, AND gate one, AND gate one. What is AND gate one? It is an AND gate, but I have to use the same name. If I use an underscore, I have to stick with that uh, underscore as well. If I used AND, gate without the underscore i have to be consistent and in the original file where i described the and gate i have to use the exact same naming and then the and gate here in my sketch takes uh takes wire one and l as inputs right wire one and l 
and it outputs for me wire 2. That's the output of the AND gate. So wire 2 is the output. Now OR gate 1 is the last gate I want to describe. So let me highlight it. This is OR gate 1. What is OR gate 1? It is an OR gate, as you can see. So OR gate 1 is OR gate. Stick with the exact same name again. I don't need to look at the ports here. I can ignore them because I'm done with them because they have to match the original file files of the node gate and gate OR gate. What I need to look at for the port mapping here is just the sketch that I made. And this OR gate takes this OR gate takes this is wire 2 by the way wire 2 and M wire 2 and M and it outputs F F, F is my last uh, signal or the output and be consistent consistent again with the naming if your circuit outputs F make sure here F is defined at some point or it's used or declared okay sometimes by accident you might want to name it Y you started with F and then change it to Y so avoid doing that and then we're going to end the structure the struct this is the name of the architecture that we chose okay now this is the complete code for the uh, behavior or the structural modeling. For the purpose of simulating our code, we're going to use uh, the EDA Playground website. Okay, um, we're going to start by changing some of the settings in it after we log in so we can save our work. We'll start by changing uh, the test bench design to VHDL and change the text or the name of the top entity which is step number two to test bench. Make sure you spell it correctly, no, no space in it, and so on. For the uh, simulation tool, you can choose the Eldic Rivera. And then finally, make sure you tick the box next to open EP wave after run. This will ensure that the timing diagram appears when you click run. And after that, make sure that the code is there. This is the code of the whatever file you have this is the on the left side is the test bench meaning the code that will run test on your code it's code that tests another code thank you for watching i'll have another video explaining how to use eda playground to run your code uh, to run a test on your code